Ugh. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this tank. I've, I've uh, finally got it together and got it ready to go. If you've, if you've never seen any of my videos, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications when videos come out. This video is a complete uh, assembly and install of this kit. I'm just going to throw a little bit of diesel in here. Make sure this thing doesn't leak. Boy, I'd be mad if I put 30 gallon in this and this thing leaked. I think we're going to be okay. Enjoy the video. Wait for that fan to shut off. As you can see that this is the box here that that diesel gas tank comes in. I bought a lot of stuff from Vivor in the past. Uh, it's all out of China and some of it's better quality than others. Um, but overall, I've already bought one of the gas stations so I needed one for the diesel fuel because I'm heating the garage this year with all diesel heat uh, oh I shouldn't say that I heat the garage with diesel heat until I get the temperature up and then I hold the temperature with electric heaters um, and not diesel all the time so I just need more storage for diesel instead of having 20 gas cans everywhere so We'll get to unboxing this. Okay, so we've got our hose here. That is our, that is going to tell us the gallons in the gas tank. There's our handle. It says part here. That was the lid. Set this aside. It looks like we got two wheels. So we got the two wheels with there's roller bearings, sealed bearings. Okay, this is going to be our crank pump. Now these pumps on this tank you can fill or believe it or not you can reverse it and you can suck the fuel out of a gas tank as well. Okay, these are for the bottom of the legs that go to the wheels. And then there's the pump. These are for the wheels, these shafts. Our wheel is going to go on there. We have Teflon tape. That's going to be when we thread our pump uh, hand crank to the to the top of the tank. We've got some. Well, them are nylon washers. I didn't notice that on the other set. And two bolts. And then this is our adjuster piece. We've got our wood hand crank. And then this is our valve that our gas hose is going to go on. And we have our two wheels. So there's really not a lot to this thing. The main thing is that this tank, I believe it's 201. If I'm wrong, I'll change and edit the video. It's 201 stainless steel, which is good for pretty much any type of fuel whatsoever. So the in inside of the tank won't rust, but I'm not going to guarantee over a period of years that this paint will hold up on the outside. Especially if you have it in a garage, you've got moisture, you've got... A liquid stored in here you're gonna get moisture that builds up on the outside of the tank um, on the other tank that I got I waxed it and then I used a product called Amsoil mud, sl uh, mud slinger and I coated the whole tank it probably every year or so you want to wax the tank and take care of the paint on the tank so okay get this camera adjusted this tank isn't very heavy sure how that looks. How's that look? Well, I mean, it's not all dented up. 
which is good. Got a little dent in it. And you got you can expect some kind of dent when you're shipping this. I mean, this ain't come all the way from China to the U.S. to my door for the price. It may be a little scraped up. People that buy stuff that want things just super perfect. I mean, it's just crazy. I mean, think about it, man. China on a boat. I mean, people that just want things perfect when stuff is like custom made, it's just unbelievable because think about this. This was made in a factory in China. It got packaged up in China. It got forklifted and put in probably a box truck, 52 foot trailer, went to a port somewhere, got loaded onto a boat, went across the whole freaking ocean, came to America, laid in there, got unloaded, went to the distributor, distributor sent it to the uh, Amazon warehouse, the Amazon warehouse then distributes it out. I mean, it's been through so much and it's got one little dent it looks like. So, yeah. I kind of like that yellow. It's a little different than my Falco motorcycle, but it's identifiable as diesel fuel. Okay, so we have an owner's manual, which I highly suggest um, following. You're not going to watch me flip through this. I'm just going to just follow the directions. I'm just going to put it together as the directions say here. And then actually before I start that, I'm going to go ahead and spray this thing down and get a good coat of uh, that mud slinger on here just before I put it together because it'll be easier to, if you're going to wax this tank, I highly suggest waxing it. Uh, is go ahead and wax it and everything before it goes together especially on the bottom side because you want to get a good coat of wax on there in case you fill it up and then all of a sudden you think oh my god I should have got the bottom because there ain't much room between the wheels and the bottom of the tank so I'm just going to spray this thing down Okay, I noticed, and I'll come around here, I'll show you what happened. This is the same thing that happened to the other tank that I wasn't for sure if it was going to leak or not. So, I'll show you the bottom of what's, what's going on when it's getting shipped. Okay, so step one is uh, we're going to put these, these casters in here for the wheels. And they actually thread in, I forgot there. The holes are threaded into the bottom of the tanks. Uh, I'll show you what we're going to do there. Okay, so what you want to do if you can't get your shaft in here, there it goes, didn't have a good grip on it all the way is I'm going to run this castle nut on here. This is for the wheel and then I'm going to turn it over is what I'm going to do and that will secure the shaft onto the unit itself. We'll go ahead and do this side too. Oops. That way we know they're secure. Yeah, see, look how much I got to turn there. Ah, that's not in the directions. But look how, how much they turn. Now, before I put the wheels on, that's the next step. Step two is the wheels. Oh, this ain't I see's got a lot of fluid in it. I haven't used this in a while. We're just going to put a little bit of this on the shaft there, on the on the wheels. Don't necessarily need to grease this or anything, but I just do anyway. Same thing with the threads. Just in case they ever go. Okay, 
Now we're going to put the wheels on. There we go. So we got the washer, then the castle nut. You don't want it super tight because you want the wheel to spin freely. So just hand tight it and make sure it, it spins freely. Then same thing on this side. Washer, castle nut. So what I want to show you here is this is where I had my problem on my gas tank. Look at this stud here. This is the third step is removing these nuts and putting these plates on. This stud got bent in shipment. When you open up the tank and look down into the tank, these nuts, or I think they're nuts, I'll have to see if I can look down in the tank there, they're pushed in and then they're welded so we'll just pray that the weld isn't broke somewhere there um, the other ones look okay here but it looks like they just in the manufacturing process these nuts go on and then they, they paint them so and this this one here it's bent too so I think this is a common this is a common problem if you order one of these um, we'll try to address this hopefully I don't have to bend these um, because if I do I've got to heat it up and if I heat it up it's gonna mess with the paint but I'll try to go get my camera so I can show you down in the tank what the tank inside of the tank looks like so you can understand that these this this could leak possibly if you get one of these and it's it's really jacked up I mean you could have a possibility of the whole thing leaking brackets here now these brackets do go to the outside we actually got lucky or no it's this side now this see, see we got a little bit of a problem now because that stud is bent so I only got a couple options here I'll show you what I'm gonna do let's go ahead and get this this other side on first Get them good and tight on there. Paint is so thick that using a socket on these, I mean, you can go get a socket. The crescent wrench. is just fine and there's not a whole lot of options here 
mean, I'm, it, it's off. I'll tell you what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this hole out a little larger and then probably beat it on with a hammer because I hate to hit the stud because I don't want the tank to leak. Maybe I'll do an episode about the Bauer drills that I use. So I've got to come in and I've got to just make this hole just a little bit wider toward the uh, toward the bracket here. should do it and then when we go to tighten the nut up it will it'll pull flat let's see if that worked I might have to open it up a little bit more see what we got going on here I'm just gonna give that a little love tap and see what happens here I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and get these two tight. Well, maybe we're not because this one's going to be at an angle. I'm going to go ahead and we're not going to tighten this one, but I'm going to get it up against the, the metal here. And that's it. We're not going to super tighten it. And see, it went to move the top one, the top bracket, up. Okay, we're going to, well, there goes the paint on that one. two is tight then I'm gonna come back to this one because what this is gonna do if I go to tighten this this is gonna move that that stud and I'm not for sure I want to try to get it straight because I don't want to break that weld so we're just got it basically hand tight Ugh. That's tight there because if we go if you go to pull this stud I mean you might have a possibility of one of these welds or something as you're moving that stud it might create a little a little hole 
and I don't want that. It's clearly flush. Now we're going to go ahead and put our wheels on. Both wheels have ca uh, have the caster lock on them. Both of them do, so they'll go on either side. And these nuts, I just measured them out. They're 13s, and they have nylon locking uh, nuts here for the internal. These these will never come off. We'll just do these by hand. I guess for time I could go to keep the video down. I could use a um, impact. We're just going to go across both pattern here. And I'll tell you, with the way the the economy is going and everything, having a little bit of fuel uh, uh, on hand may not be a bad idea. Side. Okay, and if you don't know, we're on step four. And I don't know if you can hear that clicking in the background. That clicking is the fuel pump for the diesel heaters that I got running. If you've ever thought about running, buying those Chinese diesel heaters, um, I'm going to make a, a whole video on those. I've owned pretty much four different diesel heaters, Chinese diesel heaters, and there's some downfalls to the diesel heaters and there's some great benefits to the diesel heaters. So, um, you might want to keep an eye out because I'm going to do a, a diesel heater video after I get this garage situated. We just want to get these snug. We don't want to get these super tight all the way yet. Then if you could see my little golden ratchet here, this come from Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight has been stepping their game up, dude. I mean, it's absurd how much they've stepped their game up in the past, uh, basically 10 years. 10 years ago, I used to go on a Harbor Freight with my dad. Ugh. The only thing I'd buy is like zip ties, bolts. Maybe a few little sockets, just anything that was like hand tool related or what I call consumables like drill bits and, and drills. And when my Craftsman power tools went out, um, I had the old 19.2 NICAD batteries. I, I, I went and I thought I was going to go, oh, I was going to get a Milwaukee. Well, as a hobbyist, I don't need Milwaukee. So I decided on the Bauer 20 volt brand. And I just love them. They're a good hobbyist uh, power tool, and yet they're really affordable that if you break them, you can replace them. So, okay, off to the next step. Now we can go ahead and get this thing set up. Now we are on step five. We're going to get this neck put on here. So what we're going to want to do here is we've got to put our ring on here first. Do not force this cockeye down on this. This threading is very thin on this pipe. It's very important that you try to take it slow to get this on to make sure you're not doing what's called cross threading. It's very important here. Like right there, it didn't, it didn't want to go on. It's got a little bit of paint sprayed on it. This is the part 
where the gas comes out. Wow. And I didn't cross thread it. It just isn't. It's not going down. Oh wow. I'm kind of afraid to do this any farther. Ugh. I should have cleaned the paint up. Oh my god. I bet you I ain't got a tap to re-thread that neither. I'll tell you what, I just threaded that. I don't think this piece was manufactured right. I, I may not even run this, to be honest with you. Because this is just, it's too tight. don't believe that that ring got got made correctly because on the other one I did I did not have this problem stuck. Ugh, nope. Just have to keep turning it. God. but I forgot I sprayed it with WD-40. Whoops, that's all right. wasn't very good at all. The WD-40 fucked it all up. Let's go ahead. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get this pump on here. <laughs> wow. Wow is all I can say. I just broke the ground cable off of the bull. <laughs> oh well. Wow, okay, about got that perfect. Look at that. 
This is the front. We got to get this shaft to the front. Wow, almost perfect. I'm not even going to turn that. Wow, all right, I'm sweating. Put our nozzle on for step six here. I'm just going to Teflon this as well. Make sure we don't get no leaks. Now I ain't the most pro Teflon taper. But I can get the job done. Hopefully I put the tape on the right way. And it looks like I put it on backwards. <laughs> it should be all right. We'll just tighten this all the way down. No, I put the tape on the right way. It's just getting caught. Maybe I didn't. Step seven is we got to put the the pump handle on. Oh wow! Look at that. So on this pump handle, you've got a flat spot here to match the shaft. So it goes in the right spot. Then we'll tighten this up. Ah. Ooh, okay. So down inside here you can see a little bit of it. Now see where the opening is? Now that's going to create the suction. See it? To get the fluid to come through. So we're not going to go in the opening. You can see a little bit. It looks like, uh, just looks like oil. And I've got some air tool oil that isn't open. Ow, motherfucker. Open try to get some up in there then I'm just gonna crank it oh yeah I mean I can feel it already And the other one, when I filled it, it started coming up. It's a lot. Oh, yeah. You've got to lubricate that when you buy these. Look at the smoothness here. It's all dried up. Who knows how long these things have been sitting in a warehouse. Hell, this thing could have been manufactured five, six years ago. You've got to oil this to smooth this out. I don't know. It doesn't say, like, anything else about how often to do this so it's just better to get it done right here right now and it really smooths out the operation and it really smooths out and it really smooths out the operation okay we're now going to put on our our hose here and they actually send you one cheapo clamp I've actually got a bunch of clamps left over from my other business that I run where I need different clamps you're just gonna put the clamps on the end of the hose first then we're gonna put our hose on and then we're gonna go ahead and clamp it up so what I did with the other one was I 
I pushed it down as far as I could get it and did the bottom first. And then I went to the top. Just because we don't want no leaks. You don't have to be super tight because you might end up running the clamp into the hose is what might happen. Okay, we're getting almost done here. Now we got to put the fuel gauge on right there. This will tell you how much fuel you got in your tank. Again, I'm going to Teflon this. Doesn't tell me to do that, but I want to. I'm just not having a good day out here today. Real simple. I'm just going to put that through there, put that there. That's probably the easiest step. You just want to make sure that when we put this in, that it comes all the way up inside this plastic piece and pull it to make sure it's nice and flat in here because we're just going to lay it on top and kind of hold the meter up. Okay, and then what's going to happen is you're going to want to keep turning this down. Your numbers are right here. Kind of slant the numbers to uh, what would be my left, so you're right. And then as you move the cap, because it's just plastic, it's tight, so it's going to want to move the numbers to the right. So you can see, and we're bottomed out right there, and we can see the numbers right to the front. Just a little tip for you. Ugh. Okay, so I actually broke the ground. This is important so you don't blow yourself up. You need this ground on here. It's very important that you ground this out so you don't get any static electricity. More for like kerosene or, or gasoline. Diesel doesn't really combust like that. The gas will for sure. So I got to try to get this put back in there and then get it pinched up. It just it just didn't get crimped real good. Oops! Oh crap! then I just pulled this outside of the tank and it wasn't really installed properly oh my god okay so I have officially fished the filter out of the tank don't know if I'll include that footage because there was so much cussing trying to get that thing out of there when you buy one of these tanks you're gonna have a painted ring which I don't agree with because I'm not for sure how well the gas would eat that up this one's going to be used for diesel but the the ring needs to go in first before the filter and there's just a little lip on the inside that's going to catch this like so as you can see the little ring here and then our filter oops is going to go on top and I actually highly suggest using that and then our cap. Then I think all we got to do is put
put this whoa let's knock the camera over put the uh, the carry handle on here okay this is the last move here is the handle then we just have two bolts and nuts then if you made it toward the end of this video here I will do a video a review on using this thing and I'm got, kind of going through some uh, some challenges between work and YouTube and I've been looking at some property in Missouri. I'm getting ready to go look at some acreage in Missouri, so I'm not real sure what I'm going to do if I'm going to own one house or if I have two houses with some property. I go blow some steam off on the weekend, but you know, so this channel's kind of going to slow down a little bit until I can get things figured out here. And these uh, nuts and bolts are 14 millimeter. Oh, that's. Lefty loosey righty tidy. Uh, and part of me buying these tanks, these storage tanks, is one, my garage. The only way I could get it. Um, hello? 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 Part of me buying these storage tanks is the only way I could get the heat up in this garage in a, in a good time over the years is I found these diesel heaters and I've gone through about 10 of these not 10 what am I what am I saying about three or four of these diesel heaters so um, they do run on diesel you can run them on oil and stuff but um, I need to have storage so I'm not going back and forth and I don't want to have to store 30 gallon of diesel in my garage so yeah these, these uh, storage tanks well worth the, the penny here